Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, I'm planting lots and lots of containers. As you saw from the beginning, I have a ton of containers uh, that I'm uh, uh, introducing into this new landscape project that I have going on uh, in this uh, small urban backyard. And uh, I'm running irrigation into all of them uh, because I'm, I'm running drip throughout the entire space. So the containers will be kind of self-maintaining uh, during the season. I'll basically put anything into a container. I have a palm in a container over here that I'll show you, and I have a cypress in a container over there, and cryptomeria, and uh, tropicals uh, like this, uh, grasses, uh, ground covers. Doesn't really matter. If I think they look good in a container together, I'll put them in there, uh, and I'll uh, you know, break them back apart later and use them in, in, in other ways once they need to come out of the containers. Uh, uh, these, all these containers came from uh, Michael Carr Designs. I was actually supposed to go down to his place earlier in uh, April and uh, tour his facility in Atlanta. He sells to independent garden centers all over the country. So if there's a, if there's a garden center near you, they're probably selling Michael Carr Designs containers. Um, like I say, I was going to tour his place and, and uh, get some things while I was there and then do this project, but he ended up sending me these things um, uh, because the world kind of flipped upside down. But I wanted to show you uh, that my process of planting one and then I'll go around and show you all the things that I've put into containers. Uh, you'll, you'll frequently hear uh, that you want some sort of thriller, some sort of upright piece. This Dianella will be my uh, uh, thriller in this container right here. And then you want some sort of filler, something that will fill some space in the container. I've got an Artemisia here um, uh, for, for this particular container that will do that. And then you want some sort of spiller, something that will come down over the edge of the container. I've got some Calibracoa uh, for that. And uh, I've also got a a vinca, a variegated vinca as well. That's what I'm going to put into this square container. Uh, I'm running drip irrigation through this entire backyard project and while I'm planting these containers I'm actually running a quarter inch uh, solid black tubing through the drain hole in the bottom and so that they're ready to go once I start uh, putting in the irrigation here. So if you continue to follow my videos you'll see how I hook all of these containers together uh, into an irrigation system uh, um, in the next few weeks so that they can be left alone during the summer and uh, kind of take care of themselves. My soil mix, um, I'd actually prefer to just use compost and a pine bark mixed together. The reason I use some pine bark is because I use things like that. I have a palm over here in one of these containers. I have a cypress over there. The shrubs would prefer not to sit in just pure potting soil they would really like to be drained a little bit better than that. So um, I use uh, pine bark and compost. I don't have enough of anything right this minute. So I kind of mix, I mixed the potting soil together that I had. I mixed some pine bark uh, that I had and I mix, I had some, I had some compost. And so it's the, all three together, but that bark should help it drain some. If you can't find pine bark soil conditioner near you, I'll link uh, Daddy Pete's product down at the bottom that uh, I know has quite a bit of bark uh, in it. And it is helpful if you're planting shrubs and containers. If you're just doing annuals and perennials, flowering things, just use you know a straight potting soil is fine. But uh, again, like I say, I'll go through here real quick and show you how I do this one. These square containers actually have feet on them, and I like to have the containers raised up off the ground a little bit. And so the ones with the feet on them, absolutely perfect. Don't have to do anything. I can plant the container, take it to where it's going, set it down, done. This round container right here has a flat bottom on it, and so I'll set it on the ground where I want it, get it pretty level, and then I'll put some sort of feet under it. I've actually got some broken clay pots and uh, some broken bricks and that kind of thing that I'll slide under it and try to raise it off the ground just a little to create a little separation to make sure that drain hole continues to work properly uh, during the season. Plus, I have my drip hose coming out of the bottom of the container and I don't want to pinch it off. Um, with it sitting flat on the ground. So that little bit of space will help this kind of curve, this kind of curve out of the bottom of the container. But uh, like I say, all I do is uh, run, run the pipe through the drain hole in the bottom, leave myself about a foot extra so that it can connect to wherever it's connecting to. And then uh, at the top right here, I'll do the same thing. I'll leave myself about maybe six or eight inches at the top and then uh, right here, I'll just put the emitters uh, in the container uh, once I get to that point. And I'm going to put adjustable emitters in there. If you, like I say, if you'll continue to follow, there's going to be some irrigation videos for this. I'm going to use emitters in here that I can adjust the flow. And so I might have one container in a little more shade over here that needs a little less water and one in the sun that needs more water, whatever. I'll be able to adjust those emitters. I'll show you that um, 
as this develops, uh, as it gets hotter, and as they actually need water. But I'm just going to put put my potting soil mix in there, and I'll pin while I'm filling it. I'll pin this uh, pipe. I'll pin that drip hose right at the back, so nobody can see it. Assuming your container has a front and a back. Okay. Okay. I talked about in another video about not putting gravel down at the bottom of the container. It can actually uh, create some, there's usually a wet area right down at the bottom of the container where the, where the, uh, the soil is really able to wick up, can continue to wick up quite a bit of water. If you put gravel down at the bottom, you will actually move that wet area up the container a little bit and uh, potentially rot your plants. So that's why I don't use gravel at the bottom of the uh, container. This is a, a, a Dianella right here called Clarity Blue. It's a beautiful blue grass. You'll get a close up of it uh, when I'm done. I will pull these roots apart just a little bit. And this one's going right in the center of this container right there. Then I'm going to use this uh, Calabracoa. Um, in the south, we, I like to use Calabracoa because it's definitely more, more heat tolerant uh, than petunias typically. Okay, I got him right in that front corner to spill over right there. Okay, same thing with that one. Okay. Then this Artemisia, it'll just take off all across this container. This is silver mound Artemisia. Okay. Then I'll have this Vinca vine that will also spill over as well. I think all these colors match pretty well. And like I say, you'll get a close up of this in just a minute. So there you go. I've got my pipe coming out the top right there coming out the bottom down there, ready to hook into the irrigation system, a good well-drained um, potting media. And uh, we got something to, you know, kind of be the center point, focal point of that container, and then other things to fill it in. Next up, I'm just gonna put one plant in uh, one container, uh, pr pretty straightforward. This is a Diplodenia right here. Diplodenia is like a Mandevilla, similar flowers and everything, but Mandevilla vines, and the Diplodenia tends to be a little shrub. Uh, I really like these. Uh, they, they bloom nonstop all summer long. You, you, you know, you really can't beat them. They do like a big, you know, really nice sunny area. This one was done as a hanging basket, which I don't know that they make the best hanging baskets because they, they're, you know, the flowers are right up on top. I mean, unless you're like nine feet tall, hanging it up is, you're not going to see the flowers as well. So I think these present themselves better as container plants uh, than they do hanging baskets. Well, hanging baskets a container too, but um, you know what I mean? Okay, I'm going to uh, get my uh, irrigation pipe run through the bottom of this container. Same as the other one. Like I say, I'm going to leave about a foot. And again, this pot sits flat, so it's sitting right on top of that pipe. I'm going to need to lift it off the ground once I get to that point. Uh, again, I'm leaving maybe six inches above the container. I'm cutting it off right there. I'll reuse this potting soil. This Diplodenia is a tropical. Uh, it's going to be a one season plant. Uh, after it dies uh, in the fall or after I get tired of it and pull it out, I might put something in this container for the fall. And I'll put, I'll put my fall container stuff directly back into the same soil because in the fall, you're not trying to grow whatever's in there. Typically, you're going to put stuff in a container in the fall that's kind of already grown because you're not, the sun's lower in the sky. It's not going to grow much, very much. So in the spring, I leave things with some space to grow all summer. In the fall, I would really crowd these pots a little bit tighter. 
And then after whatever I had in here in the fall, let's say it's a mum or whatever, uh, I would uh, then from there, I would um, dump this soil out in my, in my, gar in my uh, compost bin, let it uh, compost with that stuff for a little while, and then reuse it for other projects later on. Okay, and I think we got, I think we got him in here how I want him. I'll probably have to do this by hand. This, uh, this green cart right here I've had for, uh, it's a nursery can, cart. And the garden center I worked at when I was a teenager, I bought it from them when they closed up shop. And I used it at my nursery for, I don't know, 20, close to 20 years. And now here I am. I have it in my backyard and this house in Raleigh using it. It's the most industrial cart ever. Uh, it does have some rust here on the front. I need to put a new piece of uh, sheet metal on the top, but okay. All right. So that's it. I've got him packed, packed all the way around. And uh, this thing will just be, you know, gigantic um, over the course of the summer. It'll start to cover some of that container uh, as well. But okay, I'm gonna put these two in place and then I'm gonna go around with the camera and show you the things that I put in different containers. For me, um, when I'm picking things for containers, um, I, I, rather than go with some sort of formula, I just went and I bought a lot of things I like. Some of these things I actually did from seed right here in the, in the house. Uh, some things I already had uh, and I'll mix things together and lay them next to the containers. I've got some over here, some over here where I just laid them together. This group sat here laid together for several days and I continued to look at it, made sure I liked it, and then it goes in the container. It's personal choice. Um, you know, uh, you know things that you plant things in the containers that bring you joy and uh, don't worry about what anybody else thinks about it or how it looks or if they're things that you like and you think they go together and they fit what you're trying to do, do that. I'll give you a close up of this rectangular one that I just did first. Uh, here's the Caliber Koa right here on both ends and this will trail down uh, over the edge and uh, that's a um, silver mound Mar artemisia right there and that will quickly take off through that container that thing grows um, like a weed uh, many times i don't actually like this uh, as a perennial in the ground because it you know it, you're just constantly having to fight it back and then this is this clarity blue dianella which uh, will get quite a bit bigger uh, during the season but i think that pot uh, turned out uh, pretty well if i swing you uh, around um, over to this area. I've got pots everywhere. You'll see in this video, there are things everywhere going in the ground here. Uh, so uh, uh, if you follow along with my Wednesday update videos, you'll see um, just a tons of different uh, varieties of plants that I am in, in the process of planting. Uh, in this little cluster of three uh, containers here, um, I put this uh, Carolina Sapphire uh, Cypress in here and also in this container, there's a uh, Wandering Jew right there there's a two of verbena. There's a pink verbena and a purple verbena, and then a one, a two uh, variegated vinca vines that will come down over the edge of that container. Like I say, all of these were done exactly the same way. I got the uh, um, solid black quarter inch tubing running up in there, which I'll attach the emitters to uh, in a separate video. And uh, this container down here, that's a, a Lamandra from the Southern Living Plant Collection. That is a uh, really, uh, really great plant right there. Um, really tough uh, grass that uh, can kind of be neglected. And uh, there's a, a sweet potato vine and uh, Bacopa, the little blue right there. And then this is a uh, lemon uh, Nemesia here with the uh, yellow, yellow flowers. It'll bloom heavily all summer long. Uh, the next container, there's a, a Creeping Jenny. Uh, put some thyme in this one and a, uh, another sweet potato vine there, another wandering Jew right there. And then this is a uh, cryptomeria, a dwarf cryptomeria called Limeade. Uh, I like these little dwarf conifers as the centerpiece in these containers. And that plant back there is called a polka dot plant. And so we'll move on uh, from that one to here. This is a Tacoma. I had a couple of these last year that bloomed all summer long. This thing will just is just a relentless flowering machine. Uh, this is a, uh, another Southern Living Plant Collection piece called uh, um, Bells of Fire. So moving over here, we've got a, uh, in this rectangular container, I've got this what's called a Persian Shield, uh, Strobilanthes. Uh, this is a spike 
another one of those uh, polka dot plants and a, uh, another uh, uh, sweet potato vine right there. I've got the uh, Merlot uh, lavender in this one, it's a variegated lavender and a, a green foliage lavender in that container. And then right here, there's a, a little dwarf cryptomeria in this container called Twinkle Toes. And there's a gold sedum. And that's an Elysium right there that will trail over. Both of these will actually trail over. And then in this container, this is a windmill palm. Windmill palms are actually hardy in my area, but not in a container. It'll need to go in the ground if I'm going to uh, keep it. And uh, those are begonias in the container with it. And that windmill palm is actually quite shade tolerant. And uh, so this, this container is in a lot of sun right now. I may end up moving it back to a shady space. Those begonias and the palm uh, would not mind that at all. But that's those two and those rectangles and uh, those that little cluster over there again it's all going to be tied together in an irrigation system later on and there's just tons and tons of more plants going in the ground here and several construction projects i'm going to move uh, this way toward this uh, building uh, storage building right here i've got containers around it as well uh, over here is that other tacoma this is uh, lydia is this variety and it has yellow flowers all summer long. It looks small in that container now. It'll get gigantic. I'll actually have to move it out from, the, from there a little bit, but it'll be solid yellow most of the summer. I just recently cut it back. Moving over here, there's uh, three containers that look like barrels. I still have to level them up and uh, get them off the, uh, the ground. Uh, you just saw me plant that uh, diplodenia right there, and it will get pretty big over the course of uh, this season. And then that's a penta right there and a wandering Jew in that container and uh, get in here closer. That's a euphorbia right there and a calibracoa right there. I think that combination uh, looks great right there. I've got one more large rectangular container here and uh, that center grass or it's called a cordyline. Uh, that, that thing will have that color on it all season long and I put two more uh, diplodenias, uh, smaller ones, uh, in that container. And then uh, this is a blue lobelia and a white lobelia and there's another variegated vinca vine there and another variegated vinca vine there that will come over the edge of this container. But I do a, a v update videos uh, every Wednesday from this house and you'll see all of these things um, that are everywhere. This was, this space was very, very different uh, several weeks ago if you haven't followed along with my, uh, with my videos. Uh, but uh, there's a greenhouse going in over here in this corner and uh, this porch was added to the back of this house or redone on the back of this house. So a tremendous amount of progress going on here. And like I say, every Wednesday I do an update video and you'll get to see how these containers come along during the summer. Thanks very much for watching.